Good morning friends, Dr. James McBean is here with you today. I want to speak to you today on this topic, the laws of contracts. The reason for this is something I saw posted on the internet. And I feel compelled to respond to it in this way. The laws, the laws of contracts. Many people don't understand the laws of contracts when they read them in the scriptures. If you look at Ephesians 5 25 he said husband love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it and in Ephesians 5 22 he said wife submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord those are what we're going to deal with. But I want you to look at this. Sheep as shepherds to look after them. And pig as keepers. Cattle have herders. But wolves have no one to look after them. Yet your pure ingenuity and practicality, the wolves continue to survive and thrive down through the ages. Wolves survive and thrive because they understand the laws of practicality. Everything they do they do it by the laws of survival. A human being could share a cave with a wolf and don't even know that the wolf is there. Because the wolf is not doing nothing that contract, contrast or conflict the laws of survival. But we, human beings, we preach and we teach the scripture and we don't do the practicality because we don't do our research before we come out to preach and to talk. The Bible said that the husband must love his wife. We who are in rebellion say if the woman submit to her husband, he will love her. But there was no clause in the text that say that we said in Ephesians 5.22 we said that the wife must be in subjection to the husband we say if the husband loves his wife then she has no reason not to be in subjection to him but the scripture did not teach that we want to go into it today and you're going to see that the same thing that the scripture told the wife it told the husband the same thing what does it mean to love the Greek has a few words for love remember that our New Testament was written in Greek and our Old Testament was written in Hebrew but the, the Greek have a few words for love, but we want to look at three. 
The first one is agape o. This means to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. Full stop. But immediately after that, there's another Greek word used, and the name of that one is Philio. And Philio mean to love thy neighbor as thyself. No, I get a whole as a feeling, it has an emotion. But Philio do have it. Filio is what I do for you, is how I treat you in spite of what I think of you. You know, it is not a hug you, hug you, hug you, kiss you up thing. It's a filio. It's not like that. It is basically how I treat you in spite of how I even think of you. In other words, you can see a man out there, a Ku Klux Klan, broke down, and he needs some gas, and you go and you give him filio. Because filio is not a feeling. It's not how I feel about you. It's how I eventually treat you. What I do for you. What I do to you. So when you say husband love your wife, he's not talking about a hug you up, kiss you up. It is talking about a charity. How you treat the individual. It's what it boils down to. You say here, the scriptures told the wife to love her husband. What? Scripture told the wife to love her husband? I heard many pastors say that the Bible never told the wife to love the husband. In Titus 2 verse 4, you say that they may teach the young woman to be sober, to love their husband, and to love their children. Titus 2 verse 4 So a while ago we read in Ephesians 5 verse 25 where he told the wife the husband to love the wife and here in Titus 2 verse 4 he told the wife to love the husband Then we see where he told the scripture told the wife to be Submissive to her husband. Ephesians 5 22. He said, Wife, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. What does it mean to submit? When I was going to church in Jamaica, and when you told the believers to be in submissive to submit themselves they, they spring up themselves like this because they think that's what submissive mean to humble up yourself and they and they think to to humble me me to be like this what does it mean to be sub, to be to submit the scripture imply that husband must also be submissive to the wife. He told the husband, love your wife. He told the wife, love your husband. He told the wife, submit to the husband. And it is telling the husband to submit to the wife. It's a check and balance, equal power. A check and balance system. Because God did not intend that the wife to be a footstool or to be a child in the home. You know, the child in the home. She's an equal partner in the home. Equal power. In Ephesians 5 verse 21. He said, submit yourself one to another in the fear of God. 
She goes, it's not only the wife who said must submit. So we don't need to burn up make up make up any little thing by saying, well if the if the husband love the wife, then the wife have no have no need not to be submissive to the husband. No, he tell the both of them to love. He tell the both of them to be in submission. But look at this now. Who are we submitting to? Submitting to? Who are we? Are we really submitting to man or are we submitting to God? Who are we submitting to? In 1 Thessalonians 8 verse 4 verse 8 He therefore that despised it Despised it not man But God Was also given unto us His Holy Spirit So when we despise We are not despising man We are despising God If I am leaving here And I am going to Jamaica I tell my wife I'm going to Jamaica. I tell her where I'm going, where I'm going, where I'm going to stay, when I'm coming back. And I not only tell the wife, I tell some of my neighbors who want to give her high enough property for me. I don't give them all the details. But I say I'll be going to Jamaica Because it's respect That's it Respect I don't want them look around and don't see me It's respect That's what the whole thing boils down to Respect Because respect is a funny thing you know Man have a way for tit for tat You know respect me They may not respect you either and then we trigger off something negative in the marriage or in the relationship or in the community. You don't know, respect me, why should I respect you? We want to look at the contrast, the contracts in the Bible. In Second Chronicles 7 14, he said, if Is a clause. That's a clause right there. The laws of contract. If you study the laws of contracts, you will understand. If the word if, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, what does it mean to humble yourself? You need to research that. And pray. What does it mean to pray? You need to research that. And seek my face. What does it mean to seek my face? You need to research that. And turn from their wicked ways. What does it mean to turn from your wicked ways? You need to research that. Then. Right here we said then. This is another clause. Then. Will I hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins and I will heal their lives. You and I have to do four things. And after we have done those four things, then the Lord will do three. In the book of the Psalms, David said, Neither will he help evildoers. For behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help evil doers. If you and I doing evil, do even bother come to God. Because he's not gonna answer. He's not gonna answer. I don't want to drag out this. But I hope you understand what the scripture mean when he say that the husband must love the wife and when he say the wife must be in, in submit must be submissive to her husband or submissive to her husband it's not only 
Don't forget this. It's not only the wife he said that must be in submission. The husband must also be in submission. So you don't need to take it personally and get all offended. Well, when you preach this in church, they get offended. You don't need to get offended because the scripture also said the same thing to the husband. And when he said, husband, love your wife. You do, husband, don't need to get offended because it also said the same thing to the wife. We don't need to get keep getting offended at the scripture and keep getting swelled up like a frog over the scriptures because it give hate command commandment to the wife and it give those same hate commandment to the husband in conclusion therefore what we do in life will heck up in eternity we have to grow up we must stop misquoting the scriptures we must stop twisting the scriptures it is not about man we are truly not Submitting ourselves to man is not about man. We are submitting ourselves to God. If we keep trying to spite man, we will lose our happiness. We will lose our relationship, lose our marriage, and we will lose our way. We will lose our way. The Lord bless you. I hope I make a impact. I hope I have done well with the scripture this morning. I hope I might have cleared up some misunderstanding this morning. The Lord bless you and have a great day. Dr. James McBean signing out.